in this lesson we're looking at relative frequency, which is another phrase for experimental probability. Typically on this topic, you get given information about something that has happened in the past, and you use that information to estimate the probability that that will happen in the future. Let's take a look at these examples here. We are given a table showing four football teams, how many matches they've played, how many each of them has won, drawn and lost. All four of the teams that we can see here have played 19 games. Before doing any questions, we can see that of the four teams we've got here, Thought Provers appear to be the strongest. They've won 14 out of 19 games, whereas Southfield Town appears to be the weakest. They've only won 9 out of their 19 games. So without doing too much thinking, if you had to guess which team would be most likely to win their next game, you would probably go for Thorpe Rovers, because they've won more of the games they've played so far. They're probably a better team. Let's look at question A. We want to estimate the probability that Thorpe Rovers win their next match. All we know is that out of their previous 19 matches, they have won 14 of them. So the best estimate we can make for A is 14 nineteenths. They've won 14 out of their previous 19 matches, so we can say they win 14 nineteenths of the time, and that's an estimate for the probability that they will win. Just notice the difference between this question and ones that you might have done in lesson P2A on theoretical probability. You might be thinking there are three possible outcomes for the team. They could win, draw, or lose, and therefore the probability of winning is just one third. That's one out of the three possible outcomes. But in the lesson on theoretical probability, we noted that you can only use that logic when each of the outcomes is equally likely in the first place. And we don't know that they're equally likely to win, draw, or lose. For example, if I were to play a tennis match against the number one tennis player in the world, I wouldn't have a one in two chance of winning just because the only outcomes I have are win and lose. Those two outcomes are definitely not equally likely for me. In question B, we're being asked for an estimate of the probability that Norton United draw their next match. So Norton United have drawn two out of their 19 matches. So they don't seem to draw very often. That means the best estimate we can make using the information we have is two 19ths. They've drawn two out of their previous 19 matches, so two 19ths of the time they draw. In question C, we're being asked for the probability that Southfield Town win their next match. Southfield Town have only won nine out of their 19 matches, so the probability is just nine 19ths. And in part D, we are being asked for the probability that Eastford Rangers lose their next match. Here we can see Eastford Rangers. They have lost four out of their previous 19 matches. So we can estimate the probability as four 19ths. Now, all of these probabilities that we're estimating are based on effectively an experiment. We have experimented by making these teams play a load of matches against each other and other teams in the league, and we're using that information to come up with these probabilities. These probabilities have a specific name. They are called relative frequencies. They're not actually frequencies. They are just experimental probabilities. So that's a key phrase to remember. Used in a sentence, we would say, the relative frequency of Thorpe Rovers winning is 14 nineteenths. In other words, the probability that they win a match is 14 nineteenths based on some experimental data, where in this case, as I've said, the experiment is getting these teams to play in a league. You might have noticed that the word estimate is in bold here. All of these probabilities are just estimates. In this particular case, we might be able to come up with better probabilities if we had more information. For example, if we knew who Thorpe Rovers were going to play in their next match, we might be able to adjust this probability. For example, if they were playing one of the worst teams in the league, they might be even more likely to win. 
Whereas if they were playing a better team in the league, their probability might be a bit lower than 14-19s. Also, it might be useful to know if one or more of their players have been injured since they've played their first 19 matches. So all of a sudden, they might not be as good a team anymore, which would lower their probability of winning their next match. On the other hand, maybe they've got some new players coming into the team who might improve their probability of winning the next match. So those are some examples of bits of extra information that might help you make a better estimate of the probability. So if you had extra information, you might feel like you need to change these estimates of probability. And that might be fair enough. However, based on the information we have, the relative frequency of Thorpe Rovers winning their next match at this point in time is 14 19 so that's a subtle difference between relative frequency and estimated probability. The relative frequency is just based on figures that you've already got, and you can use that as an estimate for probability. If you get some extra information, you might have an improved estimate, but the relative frequency itself is just based on figures that are given to you. In this question, we're given quite a lot of information. We're told that by the end of 1987, Chris Evert and Martina Navratilova had played each other 75 times. And at that point in time, Chris Evert had won 35 matches and Martina Navratilova had won 40 matches. In question A, we need to estimate the probability that Evert would win their next match. So we can work out the relative frequency of Evert winning. Evert had won 35 times out of 75. So her relative frequency is 35 75ths. Now, without having any extra information, that is as good an estimate as we can come up with. So 35 75ths is the probability that Evert would win their next match, which would be their first match in 1988. That is a fraction that we can simplify if we need to. That works out as 7 15ths. In question B, we get a bit more information now. It turned out that Evert won their first two matches in 1988, so their head-to-head -head record becomes 37-40 instead of 35-40. Based on this overall record, we need to estimate the probability that Evert would win their next match. So based on the total number of matches played, which is now 77, 37 plus 40, we find that Evert has won 37 of them. So that's a relative frequency of 37 over 77. And we can't simplify that fraction, so we leave it as it is. So in part B, we're saying that the probability that Evert wins their third match in 1988 is going to be 37 over 77. In part C, the question says, it could be argued that the probability will be higher than 37 77 Why might this be the case? Well, this probability, 37 77 is based on their entire career record over 77 matches. But that could be spread over many years. If we look at just their most recent form in 1988, we find that Evert is leading 2-0. So maybe at that point, she was getting better. Maybe Navratilova was on the decline. And Based on just the most recent information, Evert was looking more likely to win. Again, it's hard to say without knowing more details, but that would be one possible reason for thinking, actually, Evert is more likely to win the next match than that probability suggests. This is another illustration of the limitations of relative frequency. Relative frequency does give you an estimate of the probability that something will happen, but how do you decide which relative frequency you want to use? Do you use, for example, their entire career head-to-head -head record to get an estimated probability of 37 77 Or could you perhaps look at their most recent three, four or five matches, for example? Using just the information from those most recent matches, you would get a different relative frequency and therefore you might come up with a different estimate for probability. That's the kind of limitation that you need to be aware of.